Well, trouble on the high seas, folks, when an Antarctic cruise, uh, the ship lost, well, you know, there's some debate about whether or not it lost an engine, so we're going to talk about that in just a second. Now, it's a huge, beautiful cruise ship. This is a very expensive trip that these folks are on. It's called the Kalia 2, uh, and it bobbed about in the treacherous surf. Look at these pictures on the left-hand side of your screen, and then we also show you the map of where it was headed. Eighty-nine passengers aboard, all of them are Americans. The ship was set to, to return today after a week-long trip. So we have with us an expert uh, on these waters, an Arctic adventurer, John Bowermaster, who has spoken to some of the people on the rescue crew, and he joins us on the phone. Hey, John, how are you? Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Boy, uh, you know, the, the captain apparently says he's done this crossing 159 times, and he's never, ever, ever seen anything like this out there. Yeah, well, they were hitting seas, they said, which were 30 feet, so that's like r running the boats continuously into a three-story building. Whoa. And yeah, the, apparently they didn't lose completely power, but at one point they, were, they admitted to being only able to travel one, one knot an hour, so basically more than one mile an hour. So some, something was obviously wrong. So. Unbelievable. I, I mean, it, fortunately, uh, nobody is injured, but you know, when we're looking at this, this video again of, of what it's been like there, you've worked on expeditions a lot in this area, uh, and you actually rescued people off a ship in this same zone there's going to be a lot of people traveling in this area, you, be you believe. Well, I mean, every year the number of people who visit the Antarctic Peninsula by tourist boat grows. And as a result, I mean, just statistically, the more people you send down there, the more boats you get you send down there, there are going to continue to be accidents. But it does seem that every year during this kind of short summer season down there, which is kind of November to February, something goes wrong. In 2007, we actually watched the very first uh, Antarctic tourist ship sink off the tip of the peninsula. It had hit ice, and, and when we arrived, all of its passengers were in life rafts. Wow. I mean, this video is so incredible. Talk to me about what they do on the ship to try to help the ship, you know, make it through these... Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, December 8th, 2010, and I'm Darko. Welcome to part two of this news bulletin. Um, new listeners, please visit my website, www.ggnonline.com. Uh, we left off this, with this Wired article, uh, The Face of Allah Weapon Returns. It's basically referring to Project Bluebeam uh, technology that's been talked about and theorized, um, I'd say, for at least a good 10 years. And uh, so here we go. It's now really being discussed in mainstream media. You got the London, I'm sorry, I thought it was the London Telegraph. It's the New York Times, um, but it's still mainstream media covering his holograms deliver 3D without the goofy glasses. So um, it goes in here and it says, when the famous hologram of Princess Leia says, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi, in Star Wars, it's science fiction. Now you can watch actual moving holograms that are filmed in one spot and then projected in another spot. The hologram is about the size of and resolution of Princess Leia in the movie. The Nasser um, Pagma Brian, whatever, an optical scientist at the University of Arizona and leader of a research team that recently demonstrated the technology reported in the November 4, uh, 4th issue of Nature. The holograms aren't as speedy as those in Hollywood. It says the images move a lot more uh, haltingly as the display changes only every two seconds, far slower than the video sailing past at 30 frames a second. But he says, unlike f science fiction, these holograms are actually happening and in close to real time. A fellow is filmed in one room, the computer process, the data is sent uh, via Ethernet to another room, and then laser beams go to work. Voila, his holographic tele uh, presence appears and moves, albeit somewhat jerkily, it apparently is solid detail until you try to put a hand through them. And, um, and it goes down here and it says the innovative research in holography, um, or maybe holography, I guess, is going on at labs and companies worldwide, said Lisa Dar, a senior technology manager at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, who is an expert in holographic materials. Quote, groups are deploying new materials and methods to create compelling work of both still and moving holograms. And, of course, this is a PR piece, right, because they're just getting people ready for this. And, uh, you know, us conspiracy theorists, us nutballs, know exactly what this technology is going to be used for. And where is it? Uh, where is the real reason? Well, it's tucked away tight at the end of this little paragraph here, mixed in between architecture, engineering, and uh, games. It says, um, 
we may need to wait a decade before watching holographic movies at home. Oh, I think the plebs are going to start crying. Their HD TVs and 3D isn't enough. But even before the technology is practical for games and entertainment, it promises applications in advertising, military, architecture, engine, engine engineering. So that's what it's being going to be used for military purposes, for scaring the hell out of, um, quote, uh, the enemy on the battlefield. So... So it's no surprise when it says here, Zebra's main customer has been, what? The Department of Defense, which sends data and computer files to the company. Zebra then renders holographic displays, for example, battlefields in Iraq and Afghanistan. So I'm going to finish up this article right here and just kind of read through it. Uh, like I said, the text and the font is pretty small. But uh, so why am I reading this is, uh, well, basically because, like I said, there's a lot of people that think that this technology is going to be used in the near future. Uh, basically, they're going to... Um, you could talk about DARPA and the Department of Defense and the Pentagon. That's who's going to be using it. And they're going to display images of either Jesus or um, Allah. Uh, basically, some kind of spiritual leader. They're going to shoot that in the sky. And um, uh, for whatever reasons, it's going to be used for uh, 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 manipulating public opinion on something. So they're going to have that. And then they're uh, possibly going to have this stage alien invasion. And uh, so holographic technology uh, uh, both goes under Project Bluebeam, which, of course, is what? Theoretical. So, But here I'm showing the information saying that it's basically the technology exists. Said the most recent mention of this idea in the New Hampshire, a student newspaper which explores non-lethal weapons in a fascinating three-part series. The first article, which mentions the hologram weapon, is based on an interview with lead. Uh, I'm sorry, with the head of the Non-Lethal Technology Innovation Center at the University of New Hampshire. And uh, it says this center, like another non-lethal lab at the University of Pennsylvania, has been supported by the Department of Defense. It said in the concept stage, uh, Schweier said are more outlandish weapons such as enormous holograms to incite fear in soldiers on the battlefield. It's unclear if the proposed hologram is something the lab is working on or just something they've heard exists, but projecting the image of something frightening like a deity is not a new idea and follows the footsteps of the voice of God weapon, a device that some have suggested could be used to transmit messages into people's heads as if God were speaking directly to them. It said, nor is the God hologram really a new idea, though it's interesting to see it's still bandied about. Military an analysis Bill Aiken wrote about this concept back in 1999, which described it as a holographic image of Allah. According to a military physicist given the task of looking into a hologram idea, the feasibility has been established of projecting large three-dimensional objects that appear to float in the air, Arkin wrote, quote, but doing so over the skies of Iraq to project such a hologram over Baghdad on the order of a several hundred feet, they calculated would take a mere more than a mile square in space, as well as a huge projectors and power source. Well, uh, guys, you know, I'm just going to go on a limb here. Like, I'm not a scientist, a physicist. I'm just basically a journalist and broadcaster. And uh, I'm just, like I said, going on a limb here. But they're talking about having a mirror more than a square mile. What the hell do you think they're spraying? They're spraying little mirror particles. That's what this ge geoengineering is. They're creating an artificial ionosphere. And then, as well as a huge projectors, those are those ground satellites and all the satellites that they're putting in the air. So you have satellites and lasers. And then what? A power source. Well, that's HARP. That's coming from the ground that they're shooting up in the ionosphere, these radio frequencies, and all these big, humongous radio towers that you're seeing springing up near highways and routes, rural routes. There's your power source, and there's your mirror. Um, but like I said, I'm not a physicist or scientist. That's just me kind of keeping an open mind and looking what's what's out there as far as what we know. Said, and besides, finishing up here, investigators came back, and what does Allah look like? Seriously, this is an excellent question, precisely because when I looked on Google Images for pictures of Allah, I found Zilich. If I look for pictures of God, as in the Western world, however, I get tons. Usually an old dude with a billowy beard. So kind of a useless ending right there. But either way, I think you get the point. Moving on here to some eugenics. Artificial nano food could soon show up at a store near you. Um, I covered this recently, but uh, the link will be posted. I'm going to move on here. Uh, Sesame Street rolls out Superfood Muppets, sponsored by Merck. And um, it goes on here, and it says... Uh, uh, now even Sesame Street is jumping onto the Superfoods bandwagon by introducing the new Muppets called the Superfoods. They're being rolled out next week under the claim that the Sesame Street is tackling food insecurity by teaching kids how to eat well on a budget. It said there's just one problem with all this. 
three out of the four new superfood Muppets aren't even superfoods. Next one up, Dirty Money, traces of BPA found on currency. So just uh, more BPA. It seems to be in everything, a lining of cans, and it's in your water bottles. It's in uh, children's bottles. They just banned it in Canada, and the e EU, I believe, is banning it, but the U.S. hasn't still. And we got boys today maybe hitting puberty earlier. I just covered this uh, uh, um, probably about within the past week under a eugenics video about girls, though, saying that girls are hitting uh, puberty earlier as well, early as 7 years old. So now uh, boys are hitting between 12 and 15 instead of 13 to 16. This is all eugenics, of course. H1N1 vaccine leaked to 700% increase in miscarriages. How about that number? That is a staggering statistic, man. CDC and EPA caught withholding truth about toxic drinking water said a recent story from the Washington Post reveals that the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the U.S. EPA not only dragged their feet on releasing an important report about the dangers of contaminated drinking water supplies and top officials are now trying to justify this reprehensible action by claiming the agencies were only acting out of human instinct that is, quote, slow to admit error. Next story up is over half of China's water uh, polluted beyond drinkability. More than half the water in China is so polluted as to be undrinkable, and nearly a quarter is so toxic that it's unsafe for even industrial use, according to the latest survey by the country's Ministry of Environmental Protection. Poor labeling on children's medication causing overdoses. Parents who give their children over-the-counter medicines need to be highly cautious when doing so, say researchers from the New York University School of Medicine. Many children's cough and cold medicines, as well as uh, analgesic and gastrointestinal medicines, are often inconsistently labeled and packaged, which leads to confusion and overdoses. And this is the new thing that the uh, uh, pharma complex under the military-industrial complex is... Uh, putting out there for the plebs and the sheeps to, I guess, maybe believe. I don't really know, but I don't trust these people. So aspirin may cut cancer deaths, but caution urge. So you go ahead and suck down some aspirin if you want. But if me, I'm going to take my... Uh, I'm going to take my little um, apricot kernels and my amygdaline to fight cancer. And I'm going to not be putting... I don't plan on putting a little pink ribbon on my car anytime soon. Cop's wife uh, bites off husband's tongue during kiss. During police uh, call, man reportedly struggles to be understood due to mangled mouth. Wisconsin woman was arrested after she allegedly bit half of her 79-year-old husband's tongue off during a kiss. This was really a spooky story because there was no hostility involved. There was nothing. It was just they were singing Christmas carols and uh, getting ready to go to bed. And it came on kiss goodnight and she bit his tongue almost all the way off. But, you know, maybe they had the uh, ELFs turned up a lot up there. Student says teachers slammed him against the wall. Lewis Wall's uh, high school student says or claims he was injured Monday afternoon when a teacher repeatedly slammed him against the wall, uh, police said Tuesday. That was in Gary. Uh, Sky RFID introduces metal mount tag, uh, tracks small electronics and guns. It uh, announced the availability of their new Generation 2 UHF metal mount tag designed for implementation in PDAs, mobile phones, routers, and other small computer and electronic equipment. But it says in addition to electronic equipment, this tag can also fit inside the grips of handguns for RFID tracking of revolvers and semi-automatic handguns. Oh, look at this. Daily annoyed. Gun registry database not running. So I just wanted to uh, uh, point this out. I haven't been to Chicago in a long time, and I went down there with a buddy. And, man, I'll tell you, dude, that place is a scary, spooky place. It is just smothered with uh, Masonic uh, symbolism throughout the city. You can see it everywhere, man. Just uh, little statues uh, uh, commemorating fascist uh, masons that basically, uh, you know, did nothing for you, the common man at all. Um, they're just serving their order and to continue that order. And you walk through this city, and uh, my buddy and I did, and we just, we actually looked around. We had our, our heads were moving side to side, looking at all the sim symbolism that they had and all the cameras and surveillance equipment and that. And you know what happened? I, I, right after I got through, like, by the Shedd Aquarium, uh, we were walking for about a good hour, maybe two hours, and I was like, you know what? By now, they probably are already tracking us. And when I said that, when I said that, no later than maybe five minutes, we were walking on a lake shore, and we had this guy in army fatigues. It was an army guy, uh, actual army clothes, and the boots and everything, a backpack. He was following us, and he GPSed us, and we, we went, and we walked in front of him, 
and uh, and then we let him walk past us, and then he waited there, and we kind of just we, we left him basically. So please join me in part two. And uh, like I said, he's pretty mad that he didn't get his gun control, but he got everything else, his big brother state. So thank you.